you. Today I'm down at Cape Canaveral awaiting this space shuttle lift off. So join me as we check out this mock. Hey guys and welcome to Brick Talk TV. Hope everybody is well. In today's episode we're going to be checking out a new mock that I purchased the parts for recently. The mock in question is of course this space shuttle. It comes complete with instructions to build and stand as you can see here as well as a set of stickers that you can apply to make it a specific space shuttle of your choice. This mock is by Kings Knight and is available on rebrickable.com. As you can see here, the instructions for this model will cost you $15 to purchase and that includes all the details you need to build the space shuttle, the stand and there are stickers included as well. You can see on this sticker sheet that there are various different alternative stickers that you can put onto the space shuttle so you can customise the look and appearance of the space shuttle based on the particular one you want to build. I haven't stuck any stickers yet on my model but I will be doing that in the future and probably basing this around the Challenger. There are 2,122 pieces in this set and buying them will cost you around £318. That's an approximation according to Bricklink and Brickout estimates. Of course this is just a guide and it will vary depending on if you want to get new parts or used parts and your location in the world. So let's flip over now and take a closer look at the model itself. So first up we have the stand that the rocket is going to be sitting on. As you can see here it's made out of black plates and also Technic bricks. You have a nice plate at the front here which currently has no sticker on but the sticker is provided which gives you some more detail about the space shuttle itself. The Technic bricks also hold the rocket into place once it's completed and when we move to this side view here you can see that actually at the top there are four prongs which is where the fuel tank will be sitting and into the fuel tank you'll connect two booster rockets which will sit either side to keep it into place. At the front you'll notice that there's a 2x6 plate and this is also where the space shuttle itself will be resting once it's technic pinned into the fuel tank as well. And stay tuned because I'll be showing you later in this video how to connect the whole model onto this stand so that it can be displayed. In terms of stability this um, stand is very stable, I've had it displayed now touch wood for several months and I've not had any issues with it falling over or being dislodged and it's quite firmly in place. Next up we're going to look at the two booster rockets that are included here. They are done using some round bricks and some round panels and you can see here that they're both exactly identical in terms of the creation and the build. These are one of the first things you build in terms of the rocket itself after you've built the space shuttle which we'll cover later. You'll also notice that there are two Technic pins on each of the uh, rocket boosters and that's where we'll be connecting these into the fuel tank later on. These are quite famous parts for the space shuttle as they did cause some accidents to occur especially around the Challenger base shuttle where we had some leaks in these rocket boosters which caused the ultimate explosion of the space shuttle. Next up we have the fuel tank and this is actually constructed last out of everything in the build experience and is actually the largest construction. As you can see here it's quite predominantly dark orange in colour and you can see some different colourations here where I've had second hand pieces to put together to build this construction and it was actually rather hard or rather difficult to get all the pieces that I needed to do so I did have to wait quite a while for some orders to come through from Bricklink from different parts of the world. This is quite a large build as I mentioned already and it does take a lot of time to build it and put it all together. I think it's done a great job in terms of the front nose cone here which you can see is quite well constructed and at the bottom it has actually got some dishes in place which does mean it doesn't stand on its own and it will fall over. So this is why I've actually rested it in this instance on its side. Once it's built though you will have the stand to pull it on so it will be able to be displayed vertical. You can see some Technic pins which are here as well which is where the actual space shuttle itself is going to be connected and there are holes on the side where the rocket boosters will be connected once we put it into the display mode. Finally we have the space shuttle itself and as I mentioned this is the first thing that is built in the build experience. So you do start off building this from scratch. As you can see here hopefully it's very similar to the space shuttle that was released earlier in the year by Lego themselves and this is kind of like a scaled down version of that model and particularly in the build experience and techniques that you'll be using. You can see that this model has done a great job of having the front nose cone. There are some stickers again available to put some detail on this one which I've chosen not to do at this stage but you can definitely decorate it in any particular space shuttle that is available on the sticker sheet. In terms of details the cockpit itself cannot be accessed unlike the one that Lego released earlier in the year due to the scale and you wouldn't be able to put any minifigures uh, in this particular build. Opening up the hatches here you'll notice that there is additional detail here in the loading bay 
it, again is very similar to the Lego model that was released earlier where you have this Canada arm here which would be used to move satellites and to move other things that need to be loaded in and out of this loading bay and there is details of some sort of satellite in the cargo bay currently but again to a sort of a mini micro scale going on here. It's a nice little build they are a little stiff to open and close due to the pieces that are being used but I didn't have any problems in terms of sourcing these parts or putting them together to give this effect. Moving around the back of the space shuttle you can see here that they, these are the rocket boosters in the middle here using this transparent blue pieces. These would be used during the main takeoff but they also have the extra jets that are above that which would allow the space shuttle to position once it's in orbit. Other side of the engines you can also see that there are four flaps on the wings, two on either side. Again these can be positioned into any position that you want and that are used by the astronauts once they re-enter into the Earth's atmosphere. Above the engines also you'll see there's the large tail fin which can be expanded with air brakes which are constructed into the actual air tail itself. Again these are also seen on the Lego model that was released earlier in the year. Now let's move over and put this model all together. So first up we have to put the fuel tank in onto the stand itself. It won't stand freely on its own securely so then we must push in the rocket boosters into the Technic pin holes that are in the fuel tank. We need both of these in to make sure that the fuel tank is securely put into place on the stand as you can see here. Again using the Technic pins on the opposite side here to really make sure the fuel tank is securely in place. And then finally we put the space shuttle vertically facing up. There are some holes on the base here which allow you to stick the Technic pins in that are protruding from the fuel tank itself. Once that's all connected in securely there then it's freestanding and is quite secure. So overall with the release of a Lego space shuttle earlier in the year my interest in space grew quite considerably and I really wanted to get hold of a complete space shuttle model including the fuel tank and rocket boosters. The build of this model was fun and it did remind me of the Saturn V build that I had done in previous years. The main shuttle itself also reminded me of a small scale version of the Lego shuttle that was released earlier in the year and it felt very similar in terms of the techniques used to build the model. So if you're looking for a more complete space shuttle experience then this mock is a great place to look. As a reminder I will put a link to this mock in the description below for Rebrickable and if you do build it, do let me know and show me some photos of the final rocket. If you found this review helpful, do hit that like button as it helps us reach more people and grow the channel. And if you want to be alerted to future mock reviews we do, just hit that subscribe button with the bell notification turned on. And until next time, stay safe and I'll see you then.